I've said this before, but I'll have to say it again, I guess, um, in response to uh, Idle Day's latest video. There is more than one kind of logic. We're used to dealing with the Western one. There's more than one kind. There's more than one uh, set of criteria for what constitutes viable evidence. We're, you know, we generally deal with the Western one. That's not the only one. Um, when you're dealing with the experiential, when you're dealing with the first-person perspective, when you're dealing with things like qualia, <clears throat> people generally won't deny that these things happen. But what they're saying, what they generally say is, we can't explain it, but we will. Now, to me, that's faith. Um, or then by, by explain it, they mean we can explain it scientifically in a sort of hard science kind of way. To me, that's faith. I use, which is kind of a paradox, what is generally known as, or in, in a general sense, my general sense of groundedness when it comes to logic is Eastern logic, the Jain uh, way of logic in particular, as you can tell simply by looking at my nick. Anakantavad is Anakantavada, which is the theory of multiple points of view or predicated viewpoints, or everything is a, you have to understand that everything is a material conditional when you're talking about any sort of absolutes. That is different from the Western type of logic, and it may be fundamentally different. How shall I put it more bluntly? From the very beginning, you have to understand I'm not playing by the same set of rules as most Westerners are. Um, in Mendham seems to have finally thrown up his hands in exasperation. Um, sort of saying, well, we don't have anything, we, we can't even agree on the most basic premises here, so there's nothing further to discuss. I agree. Um, you know, it... it how do you, if you can't agree on the rules of the game, how are you going to sit down and have a game of chess? <clears throat> but agreeing on a set of rules for a game does not constitute a fact. What it does is it constitutes an agreement on the set of rules of the game. Um, it's interesting that if you do what Zappi would call dropping your anchor anywhere, you can then take that fact and twist it to make, or twist it, I shouldn't say twist it, you can then use that fact to come to almost as many conclusions as, as you can in not dropping your anchor. So absolute knowledge or certainty or whatever you want to call it is just as dodgy and just as likely to lead you off into nothingness as assuming that there are no absolute facts, or if there are any absolute facts, we can't discuss them. It's just as problematic. <clears throat> I, I, I think that Nietzsche said that he pointed out as much when he came up with perspectivism. I've often wondered if Nietzsche ever, had ever heard it on the Kantavada. <clears throat> he uh, chided Schopenhauer for being a Buddhist, uh, although Nietzsche with perspectivism um, certainly wasn't a Jain, I suppose. But he certainly used Jain tools, or tools that were remarkably similar to those that the Jains used or continue to use, as a matter of fact. Um, the Jains are, I would say, antinatalists. Um, I'm not, and neither was Nietzsche. So, just the fact that we can't agree on the rules of, of the game doesn't mean that we're now nothing more than a brain in a vat. It just means that we can't agree on the rules of the game. We can't agree on the rules of the debate that we're having. That's okay. I haven't argued the universe out of existence thereby. <clears throat> I simply said, I don't agree with any of your anchors, because that's all they are, is anchors. Um, this does not render further exploration impossible. It may render further debate in the normal sense, in the classical Western sense, like imagine, say, University of Nuremberg, 400 years ago, you have one guy standing over there at a podium, and the other end of the room, another guy standing at a podium, and in the middle are a bunch of students that the debaters are trying to influence. 
that kind of debate may not may not be possible in the backdrop of what I'm suggesting, because just the way that the, that kind of debate is set up is meant to sort of be something of a competition from which one will emerge the victor. In my case, that might not be possible, and it might not even be desirable. It might not even be the reason why you're engaging in the debate at all. Um, I don't believe that there is a victory in this. Um, absolute reality, I think, defies description, and it's, we're simply expecting too much of knowledge, or of language, rather, to say otherwise. But the fact that we can't use language, or metaphor, or whatever, to encapsulate the totality of reality doesn't mean that reality isn't there. I can only say that so much. Reality might not stand up ultimately to my analytical tools, but it's it looks bloody real, even if none of us can agree on what it actually is. There is a big difference between not being able to agree on what something is and saying that it is or it isn't. Just because I say that we can't really express it or we can't really perceive it in one way over versus another doesn't mean that the external reality isn't there. Um, I find myself repeating that a lot, but I think that it's necessary that I do so.